Sony confirmed the worst kept secret in console gaming over the past month. The PS5 Pro has officially been announced and it'll be out later this year. Is it the gaming Nirvana Sony says it is? Or is this some kind of sick and twisted joke? Let's get into it. All right, as I mentioned today, Sony officially announced via X and this PlayStation blog post the announcement for the PS5 Pro, promising all the greatest improvements to graphics and performance that any console gaming addict can ever want. Or is it? As we see here, it includes a GPU upgrade. It's got advanced ray tracing because everybody knows all the little kids and their parents all know what ray tracing is and are just needing better ray tracing. And of course, PlayStation's spectral super resolution. What a mouthful. PSSR, not to be confused with the Russians, so horrible acronym there, Sony. Essentially what it is, is AI graphics upscaling so they can offload some of the graphic math to AI math. Uh, so not sure how uh, important or uh, exciting that is for you all, but I can tell you I wasn't all that excited to hear that. Um, it's essentially their version of DLSS, so of course they needed the SS in there, I guess, as well, to give us the PSSR. It says, over the last four years since the launch of PS5, we've worked hard to continuously evolve the console experience, deliver great games our players expect from us today. I'm incredibly proud to announce the next step in the evolution and welcome the PlayStation 5 Pro to the family. And of course, we're going to scroll down here. Let's just talk about what it has right from a technical perspective so you can see what you're getting in this new state-of-the-art bleeding edge PlayStation. Of course, it has that upgraded GPU uh, that is 67% more compute units. It's got 28% faster memory and enables 45% faster rendering for gameplay, meaning better frames per second at higher graphics settings. So smoother gameplay theoretically as we get more games towards that 60 frames per second as opposed to the 30 frames per second and of course it includes the advanced ray tracing we talked about earlier so your reflective surfaces look better your water your sides of vehicles your paint jobs your mirrors and of course that ai driven upscaling uh, that uh, we also previously talked about so um, while we talk about this a little closer i'm just going to launch their big launch video here and we'll talk about this of course we have um our lead architect at playstation here telling us all about this great ps5 pro goes through the specs that we we're talking about but here's the kicker here's the problem here here is where i think they've kind of lost their mind and that is the price point to get this 47 percent greater performance, you have to pony up $699 for the PS Pro, PS5 Pro. That's at minimum $200 more than the slim version that is currently available. But $699 isn't the only problem. A $700 console isn't the only problem. That is a digital only console, so no disk drive. So if you want that disk drive, another $80. Worse, everybody sees the PS5, whether it's the original, the slim, or now the pro, they want it in that vertical stand-up position. Well, they're not even including a stand for that $699 price. So you're going to not only have to go get that disk drive if you're a physical media lover who doesn't want their games to disappear 12 days after they're released, you're also going to need to pick up that vertical stand for another $30. So all in, you're looking at $810 to pick one of these up to have the vertical stand and the disk drive 
if you're looking to upgrade from your traditional PS5 experience. Maybe if you're a consumer that doesn't have a PS5 already and you're thinking about it, that that extra $300 is, um, you know, two to 300, depending on the options you go with, isn't too much for you. But are you really getting the performance you really care about? They go through and they show side by side views of some of their earlier releases in the PS5 library. Again, where it's just what over four years, the PS5 has been out at this point, which is absolutely insane. And I challenge you, right? I challenge you to look at these comparisons, look at these side by sides and tell me you see a difference. Are you truly seeing the smoother frame rates between the PS5 running the game and the PlayStation Pro running the game? I'm willing to bet vast majority of people don't actually see the differences. Our, one of the big examples they show is graphic rendering way off in the distance, how it's just a little sharper on the PlayStation 5 Pro than it was on the PlayStation 5. Are you even paying attention to that? I know my focus is on the character in front of me and the immediate dangers approaching that character. It's not looking at leaf detail on a tree 500 yards away. And so I wouldn't even notice that because to me, my brain is already focused on something else. Those, if they're blurry back there, it actually kind of looks more realistic because your brain isn't focused on that. The lens isn't focused on that. So making that detail super sharp so far away, I don't think that's something that, that is worth paying an extra $200. To me, this thing seems like really, really poor decision. Um, I am, I'm sure there'll be people that buy this thing, uh, especially YouTubers are going to go buy this thing because they're going to want to review it. Um, I don't know why, because they're not going to be able to review, you know, talk about much about the benefits of this thing. Cause I, I I'm, I'm putting it out there now The the difference side by side, you won't even notice. Of course, it will support all the other PS5 peripherals. So if you have the PS5 VR2, if you have the PS5 portal, all that is going to work along with this. And as I mentioned, the PlayStation 5 Slim disk drive works with the PS5 Pro. So if you already have one of those, uh, you're good to go. But if you just bought a PS5 Slim because they're, what, not even a year old at this point, I don't know why you're also going to pony up a PS5 or a PS5 Pro here in a month or two. But hey, to each their own. So to me, this this whole thing is just uh, just doesn't make any sense. Like you can see here, like I cannot tell the differences between these two side by side shots, even when they go in and focus and try to tell us that the uh, performance is better or the graphics is better. I don't see it. My eyes don't see it. Uh, it's not like I wear glasses or anything like that. It's just not there. If the frame rates are, are are so much better, I'm not seeing it. And these are cherry picked clips, right? They picked the best of the best clips that they could go to find these differences. So in the vast majority of games, well, you're not going to see anything. <laughs> you know, it's just not going to be there. And let's face it, this generation of consoles has been kind of lackluster. We've got Performance boost, if you're into 4K, you have 4K screens and stuff. It really helped move up from the PlayStation 4 to the PS5. But going to the PS5 to the PS5 Pro, there's just no value there. There's just not enough. It's not like a whole generation of graphics ahead. There's nothing to do. Not to mention, again, four years in the market. And what do we have, really? three, maybe four PlayStation exclusive titles that are worth anything, you know, just off the top of my head, Spider-Man two, obviously a good one. You now have Astro boy, which is a good one uh, you know, final fantasy seven, the rebirth, maybe, um, certainly there's been some controversial ones. Uh, you know, they continuously show the horizon dawn on there. But there is, hasn't been like these great, great titles. God of War is another one, I guess. There's a handful of these first party exclusives that came out for this thing. But for the most part, there's just not enough gaming there 
specifically for this console that would warrant paying seven or eight hundred dollars for this thing when most of the games you want to play are available on pc already you can play them at much higher fidelity much higher frame rates 60 frame rates try 120 240 frames per second if that's your thing you should be gaming on a pc not on a playstation uh it, the performance the graphics dlss from nvidia is going to outperform anything we've seen today from the playstation 5 pro but i am interested in what you guys think because obviously if you're into this i don't want to poo poo all over it this is just my opinion of this system so if you are planning to buy this i want to know drop a comments below i really appreciate you thank you for reaching it to the end of this video and uh, if you could leave a like on your way out the door and if you're not subscribed we're coming up uh, on our race to a thousand and so i would appreciate your subs uh, if you do want to subscribe and then hit, ring that bell for notification you know all that stuff uh, but again to me the playstation 5 announcement today just landed like a lead balloon it is not something i'm interested in um but you know i'll probably end up in one in, with one anyway because that's me i'm stupid <laughs> with my money and uh you know we'll see I, I maybe maybe not i don't even i don't know if i can pull the trigger on this thing there's just no not enough value there i have a playstation 5 i enjoy my playstation 5 but i barely play it i don't think i've really touched it for more than about five minutes since i beat spider-man 2 until astro boy came out the other day so uh if you want to see some clips of astro boy I'll link it at the end of this video. I put in about the first 45 minutes of the game. It is a, a great platform. Score well, scored the highest scoring Metacritic for a platformer ever for good reason. So check that out. And until next time, have fun.